Welcome to the Harper Classroom series of instructional videos. This video is on the introduction to statistical process control charts. The introduction to process control charts begins with Walter A. Schuhart, who's been called the father of statistical quality control. A significant contribution of Walter A. Schuhart is the process control chart, which he introduced in the 1920s while working at Bell Labs in Schenectady, New York. The process control chart is defined as the upper and lower control limit, which are three standard deviations of the mean about the center line. And the center line is the mean of a quality characteristic or a variable which measures the control of a process. And the variable could be a discrete variable or a continuous variable, but a variable that's significant in measuring the process. The objective of a process control chart is to monitor the control of a process over time by measuring the quality characteristic over time. The approach that we will take is first to select a quality characteristic to be measured and then construct a chart for the quality characteristic based on an in-control process. And then monitor the production by plotting the values of the quality characteristic from the production on the chart to determine anomaly in the chart. An anomaly would be anything that would deviate from the control chart when the process was in control. Using the anomaly, we will infer the control of a process and then improve the process. So let's assume that we have a quality characteristic to be measured. And let me illustrate the steps to this process by constructing a simple process control chart. For instructional purposes, assume the random sample from an experiment is given. And this random sample is from a quality characteristic, which is a continuous variable. From this sample, which is size 8, we have a mean of 5 and a variance of 2, where the sample size, mean, and variance are defined here. And the control chart is defined as the mean, plus or minus 3, standard deviations of the mean. But the standard deviation is the same as the square root of the variance of the mean. But this is the variance of the mean, which is the same as the square root of the variance of the random variable x divided by n. Incorporating the values of the mean and the variance in the sample size, we have the equation. In doing the arithmetic, we have the expression 5 plus or minus 3 halves. The center line then is the 5, the upper control limit is 6.5, and, and the lower control limit is 3.5, and, and that defines our simple process control chart. Once we've constructed the simple process control chart, then the next step is to monitor the production to determine an anomaly in the chart. To interpret a process control chart, the values of the quality characteristic plotted over time should represent a stationary time series around the center line with only a random component. And anything that deviated from that would constitute an anomaly. Well, to determine an anomaly, we have something called decision rules. And a decision rule will define an anomaly in the chart. And there could be many decision rules. Let me illustrate. Suppose we have a time series where we have too many points either below the line or above the line. And that would, in the decision rule, constitute a center line bias. And that would be an anomaly. Or another example. Suppose we had a continuously increasing set of values, either increasing or decreasing. Well, that would be a linear trend component. Again that would define an anomaly in the chart. Or, suppose we had some type of repeatable pattern. That would be a cyclical component. Again, an anomaly. Another anomaly comes from the assumption that the randomness around the center line would follow a normal distribution. And from the empirical rule of the normal distribution, the percentage of the population which lies between plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean is approximately 99.7% which implies that out of a thousand measurements on the average 997 should be between the limits and three out of a thousand on the average should be outside the limits and anything that deviates from this either within the limits or outside the limits constitutes an anomaly and that would be a non-normal control chart which again will define an anomaly but once we've defined an anomaly in the chart the next step is to infer the control of a process and this would include the method of assignable cause, assigning an anomaly in the process control chart to one or more possible causes in the process. 
So here we are taking the process control chart and through the method of assignable cause linking it back to the process so we can identify areas of improvement. But once we've determined that, the next thing is to actually improve the process. This would include configuration management. Ensuring the success of changes that improves the integrity of the, of the process. And there's two things going on here. First, ensuring the success of changes. That the changes were done correctly, that the changes were done, and they were effective. But then, that these changes improve the integrity of the process. Well, sometimes when you change part of a process, another part of the process becomes a problem. And so the integrity of the process, when changes are being made, has to be maintained. The steps of the, in the approach of the process control charts can be described as part of a quality program. I divide the quality program into three stages, quality planning, quality assurance, and quality control. And I define quality planning as everything that's done before you start monitoring production in constructing the chart, identifying the quality characteristic. Quality assurance is assuring that the control chart, which is part of the quality plan, is conducted accurately. And finally, quality control is just implementing changes. But this is my definition. And there is no set definition of quality assurance, quality control. They're used interchangeably. As a matter of fact, the Association for Quality Control has identified these definitions to be variable. In other words, one definition of quality assurance from the ASQ, American Society, Society for Quality, is all the planned and systematic activities implemented within the quality system that can be demonstrated to provide confidence that a product or service will fulfill requirements for quality. And notice in quality assurance, they include planning. Well, I separate that into quality planning. Another definition for quality control is the operational techniques and activities used to fulfill requirements for quality. Within quality control, they're talking about the op operational techniques. I separate that in out into quality assurance. But they also recognize that quality assurance and quality control are used interchangeably. In referring to actions performed to ensure the quality of a product, service, or process. And so, whatever definition you use, whatever term you use, QA for quality assurance, QC for quality control, sometimes people use them both, QA, QC. Whatever you call it, you have to do the preparation, you have to make sure that you measure and interpret the control charge correctly, and the change has to be done correctly. But this has been a simple process control chart to illustrate the steps in the approach. In industry, there are many process control charts. And the process control charts will be based on the type of quality characteristic you measure and the sampling distribution of the quality characteristic or the variable that you're measuring. For traditional charts, or the PNC chart, which is the proportion and count of an attribute characteristic, and the M chart, or X bar chart, and the R chart, which is the mean and range of the variable characteristic that you're measuring. These will be the subject of other videos in the Harper Classroom. And each one of these videos will be based on this introductory video. This ends the introduction to statistical process control charts. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.